stoked to be talking to you guys both purely because of the fact that I've seen some of the work you've done. John messaged me on Sunday, I think, and he's like, hey, man, look at this thing I made. And then there were like a barrage of messages. And I'm like, OK, I need to look at this properly. And then you did your demo today, which was cool. But I thought what would be good is you guys intro yourselves real quick and then maybe talk a bit about what you made. You go cool, first, so maybe, Mike. Yeah, Mike, yeah, you sure. go first. Um, yeah, sure. So um, Mike Gowland, I'm a Power Platform Configuration Consultant at ANS Group. Um, yeah, that's, that's me, basically. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, same. I'm a Power Platform Consultant as well. Um, you know, I'm just uh, I'm very passionate about low code solutions and you know the challenges that you have through adopting solutions and i think uh, mike and me really complement each other in quite a lot of different ways and it's been a it's been a pleasure to kind of work with him on this yeah that's amazing and mike you just did a user group right uh, yeah yeah i was at um uh london paddington user group yesterday and uh did a session on component libraries i've actually delivered it a few times now uh, that was the that was the third session i'd done um, and I also spoke at South Coast Summit as well with Jason Earnshaw. That's rad, man. Are you guys going to take what you're about to show us on the road? So you're going to show uh, everyone? Yeah, the, the, yeah. There is some there is some interest. Um, we're I think That's we're cool. getting on the the Copilot um, Connections podcast, and uh, Mark Smith over in New Zealand wants us on his podcast as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, you made something pretty damn cool. Okay. Um, so. I'm just going to do like a quick thing at, at ANS, we have the three pillars, right? So we have this adopt pillar for Copilot, which talks about, you know, using the tools and Copilot being across the board, not just M365. So low code dynamics, whatever. We have the extend pillar, which where you can extend Copilots or kind of um, manufacture your own kind of structures around these things and, and open AI. And then you have the build pillar where you can build your own Copilots. You guys have done some hybrid between extend and build. Right. So do you want to do you want to maybe I guess let's do this. Right. So, John, you tell us first what you did. And then, Mike, you kind of give give, you know, augment the story. How does that feel? Yeah, sure. nice. Um, so one of the things I get asked to do uh, because I love doing them is uh, is uh, a, a, an essay, a solution architect in ANS might come to me and say, um, we've got this client. They're in domain X, Y, Z, and we want to create a Dataverse lab for them that we would then like you to demo and run and get them to build everything. Um, now, there's there's one of the one of the one of the main challenges of that is obviously the client can be varied. You could be a water utility, you could be a university, you could be a uh, aircraft parts manufacturer and supplier. All of all of the above and much much more and much much diverse much more diverse as well so i don't have that specific do domain knowledge um i i don't know i, I may be in a day or two, day day and a half i might come up with something um but it's probably you know it, it, at best it's a bit of a guess and um so i went to and then following on from that i went to the south coast summit and there was a keynote from Donna Saka where she was really going big on AI and talking about how, you know, we really need to skill up as skill up in consultants and kind of change our mindset slightly because, you know, by the end of 2024, there's going to be there's going to be, it's, it, you know, it's already starting. There's a revolution in AI. And um, so we need to really start focusing on that. So I wanted to. Uh, look into that and I've always been a kind of person who kind of when I get into something I dive deep into it pretty quickly and I kind of went last weekend into this kind of rabbit hole and I realized okay this is this is quite powerful um yeah and then with Mike's assistance as well you know we kind of worked on it together Mike you want to you want to talk about what you've been up to as well yeah sure so um I I first sort of got introduced to um uh, generative AI, uh, probably back around sort of September, October time, and this is uh, uh, this is last year, sorry, and it was around the time that uh, Chat GPT started to become uh, sort of came into the domain, started to become mainstream. Uh, there was a lot of buzz about how how powerful it was just as a sort of chat utility then, and uh, we weren't even sort of like this is, well, it was obviously on the horizon, but we weren't thinking about actually how can we utilize this technology. It was um, yeah, a lot of the buzz was around what you can actually ask this large language model and what you can get back from it. And um, I was absolutely fascinated by it. Um, I've had a real like interest in uh, generative AI since then. I've been keeping 
uh, tabs, albeit maybe not as uh, as much as I would have wanted to, um, on all the news surrounding AI, and obviously followed the um, adoption from Microsoft for uh, what has now become Copilot. Um, and I mean, it was a few weeks ago. It was after South Coast Summit when um, you know, me and John were both there, and we watched uh, Donna Sarka's uh, keynote speech, and I sort of realised to myself, actually, you know what? I need to properly invest some time into this. I need to, um, you know, I need to invest some money into get some API tokens. Um, I need to just see what what I can do with this. Um, start to explore things like use cases, like what can we actually use it for. Um, I also had the opportunity to go to um, the Microsoft Build AI event at the um, Excel Exhibition Centre, uh, and that was great just to go around different sessions and just see um, how people are using, or how yeah, how even Microsoft are using. Um, AI, not just for um, you know, commercial applications, but also for like development applications as well. Um, just really fascinating. Um, and yeah, since then I've just been you know, really playing with an intent to try and get something useful uh, built out of it. And uh, I think what I've realized is actually it's insane how quickly you can build something. Um, I got a bit addicted to um, semantic kernel, if I'm saying that right, I can't, I always get the name wrong. Um, I got a bit addicted to that, wrote some functions, um, and then I started like feeding it all into a Canvas app, um, connecting back to OpenAI uh, through the API connection. Yeah, just it's like really got into it, really started to see what what we could do, and that's when we sort of me and John linked up, um, realised that we sort of both were on the same wavelength for this, so um, looked at what we could do with uh, yeah with that OpenAI technology. That's freaking cool, man. I love it. I love it, and uh, it's it's really interesting because. I think your tools that you've made are some of the first like practical uses that we're seeing and actual use cases. So I guess what I think we should do, right, is you guys should show us. How do you feel? Does okay. that sound like a good yeah. idea? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, nice. Okay. Um, shall I share my screen then? Yep, go right ahead, man. Yeah. Cool. Can you see that okay? Yeah, we got it. So uh, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see. Um, Thanks, I mean, it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty standard model driven app. There's nothing super fancy in this apart from Mike's amazing JavaScript, which we'll come to in a bit. Um, on the left hand side, we've got um, requests. So we're gonna we're gonna ask the large language model to do something for us. Um, we've got prompts, which is a a collection of um, uh, records where we will pass uh, the 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 court that the reason why um, we're asking the large language model questions, its purpose. Um, we also have some rules. So there's some rules that are mandatory, um, and they're kind of they're referred to as the Triple H, which is your model should be helpful, your model should be uh, harmless, and your model should be honest. Um, and then there's other rules that we can add in as we iterate through. The prompts that we're trying to create. So um, on the screen that you can see here, we've got a um, a question which is, please provide me with some systems formatting dates in Power Automate. I, I'm I really struggle with this. Uh, I've always struggled with dates in Power Automate. And what I've done is I've passed that request through to the Power Platform help prompt, and that has then provided me with an answer. So we can see here uh, if I double click on here. You can see um, uh, what it's come back with. Um, it's telling me, you know, you can use the format date function to translate the 15th of July 2023 to 1507 2023. Uh, it tells you how to do it in the Power Automate Cloudflow, tells you how to format the date time, and tells you how to translate the date. Um, it also gives you links to um, Power Automate documentation and forum documentation as well. Um, and the way that that kind of works is that in this case, we've passed it through to the Power Platform help prompt, which I created. And inside this prompt, I'm effectively giving it the context. So I'm telling the large language model that they are, it is a Power Platform consultant's assistant. And the user, which would be a Power Platform consultant, is interacting with you and you're the medium to be able to uh, answer any questions on the Power Platform. I provide it with the Microsoft website, the Power Platform website and Power Platform forums for different components of the Power Platform. And then 
its purpose is to uh, look at what the consultant asks, and it will be a specific question on the Power Platform and respond with a summary of your findings and links to where you find that answer. You should check the Microsoft Power Platform site first, and then after that, only accepted solutions inside the Power Platform forum should be shown next. A combination of both is acceptable. So that's effectively what that's doing, and that is what comes back here into this response. A um, couple of things that I've added in the last uh, last day or so. Um, this is quite important: the token count and the cost. Um, you know, just if you're using this, you, you know, you want to you want to get kind of real time value on this. Um, this is this has cost me uh, 0 0.0007 p. Um, that's the total amount of tokens. A token is effectively a a a word or a portion of a word. And there are input tokens and output tokens. That's the total of those. And then using some maths in the background inside the Power Automate Cloudflow, I calculate the token cost of that request. Um, so you can see in real time how much that's going to cost you. Um, in real terms, um, uh, I did do some maths on this. Uh, the average, average human adult reads 250 words per minute. So um, you do 60 times 250, which gives you 15,000 tokens. That's the same for the output tokens. And then you kind of uh, times that by the cost for using, uh, in this case, GPT 3.5 Turbo, which is like 0 0.003 cents, I think. Um, and that, that, that price is actually coming down. Um, yeah, so that's, that's how it kind of works. Um, Chris, would you like to see one in action? Honestly, dude, I would. I'm so dead keen on seeing one ring run live. Okay, <laughs> cool. So what we do is we get, we head over to the requests yeah. and we're going to click a new record. And I'm going to say, so please come up with a data first schema for a facilities management company. It must include, but not limited to buildings, rooms, assets, and inspections. And we've got a data verse prompt here that we're going to use. And temperature is important. Um, could you just explain that, uh, Mike? Because I think you ex you explain temperature better than I do. Yeah, sure. So um, temperature really sort of like describes the uh, the probability and the randomness of the um, next word that's going to come as the large language model is completing its phrase or sentence or a uh, bit of code, whatever that may be. Um, you can go from the temperature of zero where your large language model is very deterministic and it will only pick whatever the highest of probability is. Uh, so if I had a sentence like, it's a beautiful day, let's go to the, and then the most probable word is beach and actually the token it selects is B-E, the letters, and then follows with A-C-H. I hope I spelled that right. I get a bit weird spelling things like that, but um, uh, so that really, so the temp a temperature of zero makes it very deterministic, whereas a temperature of one uh, will essentially make it more creative. And uh, a really good, like, real world example of this is if you've used uh, Bing Chat Enterprise or, or Bing Chat and you have that slider that goes from being uh, very uh, accurate to very creative or balanced in the middle. And what you're actually doing is adjusting the temperature of the model. So if you imagine the probability of the words that are going to come next were to be like a swimming pool and you could dive down in there, the higher the temperature goes, the deeper your large language model is going to go. It may still pick those uh, words that have the high probability, but there's also a chance it will pick something further down. Um, if you use a zero open AI, um, you'll, I think you'll be limited to uh, a temp max temperature of one. Uh, if you use a zero, um, open AI, then you can actually go beyond one, but what uh, what you find really? is when you go beyond one, yeah, exactly, yeah. But when you go beyond one, the um, uh, the uh, the words that come back start to become a bit jumbled, and um, they don't really make sense. So that that one is like really like the max you want to go uh, to get something meaningful out, but um, that may be different for image generation. You might want to go beyond that to get something a little bit more more random and creative out. Um, I've not really yeah. uh, looked as deeply into the image creation, uh, although I use it a lot, um, as I have with the uh, sort of like large, large language model uh, side of things. That's awesome. That's one. So you could basically Cheers, you could basically say a higher temperature and come up with basically gobbledygook. Yeah, you can. Yeah, <laughs> it's like like it's like, the, it's like the large language model's I mean, got can, a fever. Yeah, yeah. But you can see where my brain is going with this. I'm like, what is the most random stuff we can get this thing to say? Obviously, yeah. 
because that's what we need to do. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe um, not live though. <laughs> yeah. No. So we've we've come back to come back to this example then. Um, all I've done is I've I basically while we were talking, I've sent the request, set that to yes. That triggers the cloud flow in the background to do what it needs to do. And if we refresh the page now, we have a, a response from uh, the request. And if I double click in here, I can see again how many tokens, how much it's cost us, or how much it's cost my MSDN subscription. And then there are the details for the Dataverse schema for a facilities management company, talking about buildings, rooms, assets, inspections, maintenance requests, users, work orders. It talks about the table relationships, talks about integrity. But the uh, the really cool bit, and uh, this is down to Mike, is this amazing bit with the um, ERD. So the way that that is working is in the background. Um, and if you want me to, Chris, I could go, th this would be kind of a time to go into the cloud flow. If you want me to show you the cloud flow. Um, yeah, let's do it. Let's check the tech out. Okay, so this is the cloud flow. Um, we've got a few, a few few variables, mainly that's around calculating the cost of the the tokens. Um, but the 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 the, cr the cool bit is here, where we're passing the system message, which is effectively the prompt, plus the user's message, which is their request and the temperature. And then down here, if we're using that specific um, uh, dataverse uh, prompt. Uh, that we that we created before or that we created before this before this demo um, then it comes down into this into this case and it and it runs another open eye session but this time it is it is taking the um, it's taking an example output from what I've done before Th in this case this was about aircrafts um, and it's and I'm telling it to go to uh, go and look at this website, this Mermaid Live Editor, oh, and cool, yeah. give it back to me in the syntax that Merma, Mermaid, Mermaid understands an ERD or understands an entity relationship diagram. So if we go to um, if we go to Mermaid Live, you'll see here there is the um, there is the uh, ERD. This is just an example. Um, in fact, we could, you know, if we wanted to, we could actually go and get that get that detail because it's stored as a um, stored as a value on the response record. And then, Mike, um, you can explain the next bit, Mike, about how this is how this is oh. created. Uh, oh. it, it's actually incredibly simple. We are just using the uh, Mermaid uh, library in JavaScript and just rendering that mark uh, markdown language. It comes back from the large language model. And just it, it just generates an SVG, and that's what we're displaying there. So, uh, what you'll see there is a HTML web resource on a model-driven app form that is just um, taking in that value from Dataverse uh, from that record and just running it through uh, Mermaid and just rendering that SVG that we're then displaying um, in that in that resource there. And it's yeah, it, so that, the, the, the the amount of code yeah. that went into that is like ridiculously low. And may have got a language model to write most of it. <laughs> this is genius. <laughs> so basically, so basically, if I wanted to, if I wanted to gen generate a ERD, I could basically just say, okay, um, here's my use case. So in front of a customer, right? If I'm sitting in front of a customer, yeah, and I'm like, hey, yeah, what do you want to make? And they go, hey, we want to build a room checker solution or something. I can just be like, give me a moment. Boom, 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 boom. Whack that in, spit this out, and say, yes. "Is this what you mean?" Yeah, and but that's then, and that's exactly yeah. that's that's exactly what we're going to do with a client in a couple of weeks' time. Um, they're going to ask us to do a dataverse lab, uh, and we're going to come to this tool. I'm going to ask them exactly what they want to build, and we'll use this tool as the foundation and starting point, so they can see yeah, that, the power that's wonderful. of they can see the power of this, and then they can also see that actually it's the it's the idea for me the hardest part about all of this the hardest part about being a for me the hardest part about being a consultant are these are these initial parts these initial bits where i don't have the domain expertise i do in some areas don't get me wrong maybe in like payroll or hr or a couple of other places but when it comes to the kind of nitty-gritty stuff you know talking to like a, an airline about something 
I don't really know how that's all going to sit together. And this is going to help me. And this is going to give me the starting point to then have that conversation with confidence with the client. Yeah, this is this is genius, right? So you actually you actually you built a kind of a system for a consultant, as you said. Both of you have done yeah. it. Yeah. But then we started John. We started it Sorry? last Friday, wasn't it? We started this. Uh yeah. I mean I, yeah. I I did spend quite a bit of time on it. I mean, my wife is in the, my wife can probably hear what I'm saying. Um I did probably do quite a bit on Saturday and Sunday, but I was getting to the I was getting to the point where I was so involved in it that that I could see what it could potentially do. And I think that's that's where me and Mike came together because we were like, right, this this is this is this is ridiculous. And it's it's just thinking things in a different way. Like I've I've used this example a couple of times, but when I was when I was first trying this out with Mike, um, I was getting it to um basically it, it, we were in a Teams channel and I was using a, t a keyword that would trigger that cloud flow and populate some, you know, get some text back from the large language model. And it would come back with like unformatted text. And I was like, oh, I need to look at the, I need to look at Power Automate, how to, you know, format it as HTML. And um, Mike just goes to me, no, you just need to create a rule. So all there is, is this rule that gets added to the just Dataverse prompt, which is, please provide it in the format that's HTML. Thanks a lot. This is, there you go. This is genius. This is genius, fellas. This is so absolutely genius. I think ask, uh, just ask it is going to be the new RTFM, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Just ask it. It is really yeah. going to be just yeah. ask it. Yeah, it yeah. Look, yeah. I actually think that just ask it is going to be the new RTFM is going yeah. to be a slogan on everything. Yeah. Yeah. This is great, guys. Okay, so like, what was your what was your biggest lesson, right? So what I mean. What did what was the primary thing you learned? Other than the technical part, we know that. What was the primary thing that got this working? The 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 the, the formatting of the prompt. Yeah. This, because I was playing with I was playing with OpenAI Studio as in Azure, and I was doing certain things, and it wasn't really, it wasn't really doing what I wanted to do. And then I I spoke to Mike, and Mike's like, "Remember what Donna said? It's all about the prompt." The prompt is the most important part. If you can write the prompt and then iterate through it, you know, the, the this this dataverse one, you know, I wrote that probably three or four times. And the one that the one that the one that um creates the ERD, I I wrote that six or seven times, just basically passing what I was getting back from the dataverse prompt into another prompt and saying, This is the example, can you do this? So it's all about iteration. That's the that's the key. And that's the key to all of this is 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 creating a prompt that has purpose that has context and if it doesn't have purpose or context just give it the purpose and context in natural language and you won't you won't get it right on the first time you have to keep right. iterating and reiterating and iterating until you, you, know, you get it right um and it starts yeah. to understand what it is you want and um, that's actually that, that's a really weird concept i think for um people who come from maybe like a code background or uh, from like a logic background where you actually just need to like add all this context into it and I know it's um, it's been a real learning curve for me um just thinking differently about solving problems with this technology yeah yeah and, and I think I think that's really important I think that the think differently part is probably the most key thing here and as consultants we have to change the way in which we perceive things it's not just about clicky clicky drop drop anymore it's about being able to ask a model and and actually generate some amazing outputs like you guys have done so i wanted to say congratulations fellas this is wonderful and i can't wait to see where this goes thank you yeah thank you very much chris i appreciate you taking the time to talk to us about it uh, that yeah, means, it means a lot yeah any yeah. time so i'm hoping we will uh folks will see this and be like yep john and mike built something cool you know get some brain get some brain sparks fired and hopefully they'll make something themselves I think, um, I mean, if I was to say anything to anyone who's watching this now is just to just get it, get into it, just just pay for some um, open AI credits. I mean, I, I put uh, 10 pounds onto open AI just for some credits. And I, I think I've spent 60p of that so far with um, wow. all the experimentation I've been doing. It's just like just run um, GPT 3.5 Turbo, just get a feel for how it works. 
um, it's really not going to cost that much. In fact, I used so little that I actually gave out a key to uh, the folks at ANS just to try and encourage people to start actually playing with this technology. Um, just because I know it, you know, they will probably burn through it, but they will take a little while to to do that. So, um, yeah, just 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 get stuck in now. Um, it's so exciting. It's so fast moving. Um, yeah, just uh, that's, that's all that's all I can say. Just, just play with it. That's the key thing. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. I'm and I'm using it. I'm using it. You know, in real time. Like there was a there was a, there was a couple of issues today. Um, one of them was uh, around. Uh, yeah, an issue that we had with a client, and I asked that Power Platform help um, just to just to just to check what was going on, and uh, off it went and gave me the answer, <laughs> and I was able to fix it. So, yeah, that's amazing, dudes. Well, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to stop the recording here. I think you guys have done an amazing job. So, yeah, um, I can't wait to see the next the next iteration of this thing. Yeah, thanks, man. Thank you.